All right, guys, let's talk about this very important idea of being able to uh, make a connection from box plots to histograms. Okay, so there's going to be several places in this class that we want to connect together two different kinds of graphical displays. Well, actually, we've been doing that with some of them already, you know, stem and leaf plot to histograms, those kinds of things. But one that's not quite as easy to do is a box plot to a histogram. And so we want to make the connection there. So here we go. Um, so when we talk about that, uh, I have on this page here some examples. Okay. Now I have these ordered such that the, uh, and, and this is a, a curve, but you could imagine it, you know, maybe as a histogram, you know, if you had the, uh, the, the bars of a histogram. Okay. So if we had a histogram that was shaped like this, then this is the corresponding box plot that would go with them. I found this um, paper, but where it was meant to be cut out separately so that we could do matching with it. And we're going to end up doing matching with that in another way shortly. Now, here's another one where we have higher frequencies on the outside edges here. And then here's your box plot that goes with that. Now, um, anyway, so here are the some various ones that we're going to analyze and look at and consider. You know, here I can see it's a skewed right histogram or curve. And then here I can tell it's skewed right because it's stretched out here to the right. Okay, so we have that connection. So we're going to make a couple of uh, quest statements here and connections with these questions down here below. Okay, so the first question is, when a histogram is symmetric, so we're going to look, go look at the symmetric ones, what is the shape of the box plot? So which graphs above are symmetric? Okay, so let's take a look here. Is G symmetric? No. H is. H would be symmetry. Now that's uniform, okay, but it's symmetric. So look here at the box plot. I see that it is also symmetric, all right? F is not symmetric, and neither is the box plot. Okay, look over here at E. Even though it is bimodal, I have symmetry, and I have symmetry here as well. So what I'm seeing is that when I have symmetric shapes, my box plot is also symmetric. Okay, so that's the first quality that we're going to notice, is that when I have, when histograms are symmetric, the box plot is also symmetric. And all of the graphs except F and G are symmetric. All right, so then let's take a look at this. Uh, on those two um, histograms that were skewed, F is skewed to the right. And you can see here that this is stretched out to the right. So it is also, the box plot is also skewed to the right. Here on this, we have the stretch to the left. So we have the stretch to the left on the box plot as well. All right, so skew and, um, and symmetry are pretty easy to connect with box plots and histograms. Now, and we did those ones that were done. Okay, here is something that is much more um, not, it is not intuitive. It is one, something that kind of is counterintuitive. It goes against what we naturally think should be happening. So let's really focus on it. Here we have a situation where we know that when there is a large amount of frequency on the histogram, that is a high bar. So if we have a tall amount, a high amount, a mode on the histogram, then what does that look like on the box plot? So let's take a look. Here's a good example. Let's look at actually G and F when we're looking at these. You see our higher frequencies are right here in this section. Look at what that equates to on the box plot. Okay. Our higher frequencies is a whole lot of data in an itty bitty little space on the box plot. So that seems counterintuitive. And the reason is because a box plot is not a measure of how much data is in that section. It's a matter of how varied that data is. So here, when I have a high frequency, I have that high, 
a lot of data in a small amount of space. That is why on the box plot, it makes a small box. Okay, very important connection right there. So we can see that here in graph F. I have this small amount here, which that equates to this small quartile, uh, a small varied, not varied quartile on the box plot. Okay, thinking high frequency, small quartile. High frequency is a lot of data in an itty bitty little less varied amount of space. Okay, so that is the most um, unnatural type of concept that we need to think about. Now, here's the other thing. High frequency is small quartile on the box plots is happening. All right, you can see this easily um, with the lower, oh, this, let's do this, lower and upper quartiles on graphs B and middle of graph C. So this is interesting, look here, I like this one. Do you see here how we have high frequency on the outside edges? Those high frequency on the outside edges made small, lower, and upper quartiles. So that was interesting. Here on graph C, we have data in the middle, very tall in the middle, which made small, very small interquartile range. Okay? All right. But then we had more stretched out, so it took a longer time, a longer um, range for that quartile. All right, very good. Let's move on to the next topic. Next, so let's look at box plots three, five, and seven. And we're going to determine the number of modes that we see in box plots three, five, and seven. So remember, modes are those tall parts of a frequency chart. Okay, so let's see, three, five, and seven. So here is box plot seven. Here is box plot five, and then here's box plot three. So let's take a look at those. All right, so I'm looking at just the box plots right now. Okay, so just by, I mean, just by looking at those box plots, it is very difficult for me to see what's going on. Okay, in fact, let's take a look at what the corresponding histograms that go with them are. H is uniform. There are no modes. So uniform is no modes. And I can't tell that here. Maybe the only way I can tell that from this is that I have uh, same amount of data or same spread for all three of all of these sections. I mean, but not really. Okay, look here. This one on graph E is a bimodal distribution. And look, am I able to tell that? Just by, if all I did was look at my box plot, no. And then look here, here's of course is a unimodal distribution. Can I tell that from my box plot? No. So in summary, that's another important thing to notice. You cannot tell the modes, the peaks of a histogram from just looking at the box plot alone. You can't go backwards and see from the box plot how many modes there are. Now, I can say, look at the histogram and go, oh, I see these two modes. That's a lot of data in a little small space. And that's kind of why these whiskers are smaller. Okay. So, but, so modes, you are not allowed to talk about modes on a box plot. You are not allowed to talk about modes on a box plot. So, those three box plots show symmetry but they do not show you how many modes there are. So again, box plots cannot show you modes. And if you talk about that in that way, then that's an incorrect way to do that. Okay, so now let's take a look at this. Here's um, some ones. Oh, I should pull up the, I should pull up the uh, display without, I should pull up the one that doesn't have the answer key on it. So we could kind of try take a look at that and see if you can try it. Okay, let's so take a look at those ones on the next page and um, see if you can try to tell uh, which box plot goes which with the corresponding histogram. So here we go. According to this, which box plot goes with that? So I hope you see it's box plot A. I can tell this is skewed to the right 
and I can tell box plot A is stretched to the right, so I can tell that shape there, so I can tell it's A. How about this? Which one of these two box plots correspond to these two histograms? So I'll let you think about that for a second and see which one corresponds. Okay, try that. All right. So what I want you to think of is tall, high amounts of data on this frequent on the histogram corresponds to small area on the box plot. So this does correspond with this small interquartile range because this is a good 50% of the data just in this section here, and that corresponds to a small interquartile range. Okay. Now here, this middle 50% is much more spread out. This middle 50% is more varied, and you can see, look, high amounts of data in this bottom 25%, bottom 25% is small. High amounts of data in this top 25%, that small range of, small range of um, the top quartile. All right, so now we're going to add the third component, and that is now adding the data. So let's take a look. We're going to add data, and then we're going to have the box plots and the histograms. So let's connect that. Here we go. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to compare the mean and the median. Okay, and I think I'm actually just going to do text on this. We want to compare the mean and the median, okay? And we know that for the mean and the median, remember this, we've got that situation where we say, um, you know, you compare the mean to the median. And if it is skewed right, then you're going to have your greater than skewed. You're going to point to the right, so your inequality is to the right. Okay, so that's what's going to happen if it is skewed right. Skewed left, it's the opposite. So we've got our mean. We're going to compare it to the median. Okay, skewed left. Skewed left is going to point to the left. So then in that case, we're going to have that inequality. Okay, so our mean will be less than the median. So come down here and check those out and see which one you think is which. Try that now. Okay, so based on these things, and then this one's about equal. The 4.1 and the 4 is about equal. The 67.8 and the 68 are about equal. Okay, so what that tells me is that <clears throat> this shape, this SS1 data set, the first data set, is skewed left. It tells me that this second data set is skewed right. Tells me that the third data set is somewhat symmetric. Okay. Now I'm going to put symmetric just because I don't want to type out somewhat, but you know they're not going to be perfect. Real data is not perfect. So again, this last one, somewhat symmetric. Okay. So I'm going to come down here and I'm going to identify my shapes on these. You know, skewed right. All right, so I've got those box plots situated. Let's go ahead and put them up here where they need to go. All right, so let's see. Up here, I know uh, the little I one is the skewed right, so that's the one that's got to be right here. So the little I has got to be right there, okay? The triple I is skewed left, so that makes this one happen to be the triple I is skewed left. Now, these are both symmetric, so what's going on with that? I got two of them here that are symmetric. So we need to see how varied they are. After you identify the shape and you've gotten that taken care of, now see how varied they are. 
So what I see here is um, I can tell that this one here is going to be less varied because it has more, it has the data closely clustered in the center. See, more closely clustered together. These are more spread out, so more varied. Okay, and so then this one is going to be our more varied. All right, so with that being said, then I know that uh, when I come up here and I look at the data set, see here I can see that this one is less varied, and then the one below it is got a bigger standard deviation, bigger IQR, so it is more varied. All right, so then therefore that tells me that this one is data set two, and then the bottom one is data set four. Okay, see how that works? All right. Okay, now let's do the histograms with that. So we're going to come down here and I'm going to take a look at these. And first, I'm going to do my shape. Okay, so put your shape in there. All right, got my shapes in there. So with that being said, now I know that C is the skewed left one, D is the skewed right one. So I can come on up here and I can put histogram C is the one that is skewed left. And then histogram um, D, was it? D is the one that is skewed right. So here I have C and then here I have D, okay? All right, now let's take a look at the bottom ones. Those we have to see which one is less varied. So if I'm looking at these two symmetric ones, A and B, which one will be less varied? Which one will have the data more closely clustered around the center? And I can tell that's this one right here, B, is less varied because it has more data closely clustered around the center. This one is more varied because it's got more data on the outside. It's actually almost kind of uniform looking. So that tells me that this less varied one, B, goes right here, and the more varied one, A, goes right here. So that is how I connect together data with their box plot and their histogram. All right, now you're going to go and you're going to do matching activity. Um, but I wanted to show you there's another little digital one you can do in Canvas. So if you go to the lecture videos for today, you will see there's this program, there's this Desmos, and that's a website. So if you click and go to Desmos, and um, I, it may, and hopefully it does, ask you to sign in and do that with your Google, your G address, okay? So sign in as your Google account. It should ask you to do that. Now, I've already signed in, so it's going to continue here. Oh, poo, and then I didn't separate these. Well, if you haven't done it before, then these are going to just come up kind of like all random like, okay? And so what we're going to, so let's do that. So these would just come up all random. And so first, I'm going to, I'm going to take my dot plots and I'm going to just lay them out here. I'm going to put my dot plots up at the top, move the, his, the box plots out of the way. Okay, so do that. Now, let's see if we can't now match up the data sets that we think goes with these box plots. So I'm going to let you kind of look at those for a second. They're all fairly symmetric, so that's not a giveaway. So it looks like what we're going to have to do is pay attention to the amount of data and how many dots are in a section. For example, here on this third dot plot, I see three dots or more dots in the, in the middle. And I actually see quite a few dots on the outside edges. So to me, I'm thinking that might make it um, smaller amounts of data on the outside edges. That would correspond with this box plot over here. So I'm wondering if those that goes together. That's kind of my first thought. It's 
maybe that goes there. I do know that this one, where they're all the same, that's the same in every single quartile. So in my mind, that's really going to be having all the quartiles are going to be the same width. So I'm really thinking that this one, I'm feeling confident about those two going together. Okay. Now, let's take a look at this one on the left. So this one on the left here, we've got quite a bit of data in the middle. So that's going to be a tight cluster. That's going to be small box because that data is closely clustered together. And then look at these two little guys on the outside edges. So I'm feeling pretty good about those two going together. So when you put them together, they can join together. So let's compare these again. Let's see if I need to switch them around or what. Again, I think because of these taller amounts, more dots on this outside edge, I, real, I think that corresponds to these smaller whiskers. So I'm going to put these together, and I feel that that's pretty good. All right. So you can then go, here's the next page, and you can practice those on your own. And then at the end, it'll tell you if you have the cards, both of the card sorts correct. Now, earlier in the day, I had one of the pages wrong. And so it said you have the first set correct and the, or you have the first set incorrect and the second set is correct. So you get to then go and try all those around and see which you think matches up and try them yourself digitally. All right. So then uh, once you feel like you've got that down, um, I do have a course of reflection, which is explaining in your own words why the high frequency on the histogram is a small space in the box plot. Very important thing to understand. And finally, here is the activity that you're going to do. Now, I will, I'll put a, um, I'll put a, a, the file of the card sort hard copy. So if you're more comfortable printing it out and card sorting yourself by carding it out, sorting it out physically, then you can do that. But I'll also, I'm going to attach a separate video and go through explaining you walking through how to do this matching activity. This is the activity that's the assignment and the homework to do. So um, I will make another video for that. And I hope this helps you understand how to connect box plots to histograms and how to get those lined up correctly.